Welcome back, guys, to our first round of our appendicular skeleton. And we're going to start with our pectoral girdle. And here we have looking at the scapula. <laughs> now, the scapula is what we often call our shoulder blade. And, random fact, Native Americans used to use deer scapulas as shovels. Hi. I did not know Looks this. Looks like a shovel. shovel I'm sorry. Shovel, shovel, <laughs> Why not? Especially buffalo. And looks like a Big, big strong one. Yep. So we are going to run through some of the parts of this scapula and talk about left and right, because this is one of the bones you'll have to know left and right on. Now, one of the easiest structures for me to find on this guy is the spine of the scapula. So you can see the big, huge thing that's popping off the posterior side of the scapula. Now, using that as a landmark, we can find a whole bunch of other structures. So there's a little tiny spot just above the scapula that is an indentation. So if we look at that, you can see this indentation here is our supraspinous fossa, so it is going to be superior to the spine of the scapula. And if we follow that up, you can see there is an angle right there that is our superior angle. The superior angle, we can follow that along the whole side of the scapula. This is what we call the medial border. Now, if we follow that piece down to the tip at the bottom, this is our inferior angle, the point tip at the bottom. And if we follow that up, we will hit the lateral border. Now, the lateral border, then we can kind of follow back in. So now we're going to be below the spine of the scapula. This is our inferior um, portion, and that's why we call it the infraspinous fossa. So infraspinous fossa. So now we turn this guy to actually look at the arm socket itself. Okay, the arm socket is going to be the spot where our humerus will actually be fitting in to have a nice synovial joint. Ooh. So if we look at the spot where the head of the humerus is actually going to fit in, there's this indentation that's called the glenoid cavity. Now if we look really closely, it's kind of hard to see on these models, there are two bumps. We call them tubercles. There's one above the glenoid cavity, which is our supraglenoid tubercle, and then there's one below it, which is our infra glenoid tubercle. And if you turn it just a little bit, you can see the bump a little bit better below and above. Really hard to see. You guys will have to go get your hands on those bones to find them. Now then we have two of the big huge things on top of our glenoid cavity. This is the acromion, which is the bigger one, and then the coracoid process, which is that smaller one towards the front. You know how I remember coracoid? How? Process? Coracoid has a C, and so does the scapula. So scapula, scapula coracoid. coracoid. <laughs> and then there is one more flat area that we can see on the scapula that's going to be on our anterior side, which is the subscapular fossa. It's a flat spot. And now these fossas we just ran through are going to be really good attachment points where we'll find some muscles later on in the semester. So if we go over to our Herman friend, okay, so here is Herman. Herman, you can see the glenoid cavity and the humerus okay, are going to be on our lateral side. So one of the things you guys will have to do is to determine left and right on a lot of the bones, scapula being one of them. So what I usually do is find one thing I always know is going to be posterior or anterior and one thing I always know to be medial or lateral. And on the scapula, the glenoid cavity will always be lateral. And then the spine that we found as our major landmark will always be posterior. Now the other bone that we have to look at as part of our pelvic girdle is the clavicle. Now we met the clavicle a little bit earlier at the spot where it touches our sternum, but we are going to look closely at the clavicle sternal end, which is pointy now, and the acromial end, which is going to meet up and help balance our shoulder. So if you ever break your clavicle, your shoulder's not going to be held in very well. No, not so much. Not so much. All right, so let's look back at the clavicle on its own. Now, the clavicle is not going to be something you need to know left and right of. However, you are going to need to know which end is which. All right, so the end that I call the flat nail end 
You can kind of see it's very flat. If you want to try, you can balance it on your finger. Do you think you can do it, Corrine? Uh, not so much. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a hard thing to do. But it's a nice nail head surface that you can kind of balance on your finger. Um, this is going to be the sternal end, so the end that's going to touch the sternum. And then the other end is what I call the pinchable end. You can pinch it between your fingers. This is going to be the acromial end of the clavicle. Okay, so again, no left and right on this one, but you do need to know those two parts. Okay? Pectoral girdle. Pectoral girdle. We Fantastic. are done.